You might be thinking of joining a Hopin event. Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you what it's like to use the Hopin app and what you need to know about registering with it and also how to get the best functionality out of it and how it is different to the website interface itself. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr. Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I look at supporting you with technology-enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, we're going to have a quick walkthrough of the Hopin app, which you may be using to engage with various different types of events, and this will show you how to get the best functionality out of it. Like most apps, simply go to your app store to download it and type in Hopin, H-O-P-I-N. Once you're there, simply download the app, and it'll give you then the option of logging in using either your username and login, or you can also register using very single sign-on methods like Google, Facebook, etc. Please make sure you log in using the profile that you've registered for the event with, because this will make sure that you get all of your information in one place. The sign-in screen kind of looks like this. And once you've logged in, you'll then be able to see all the various events you've already registered for. If you do want to see what other events Hopin have on offer for you, just check on the tab down below, and I'll take you to their website where you can register for more events if you choose to. However, for the demonstration purposes of this video, we're going to be having a look at the GP5T event. Simply tap on the event and you'll be taken straight through to the reception area for that event. Just to navigate you on the screen, so at the top left hand corner you can see the three different dots. If you had to tap on that, you'll be able to see the various different menu sections for the event. So we've got a reception, schedule, stage, sessions, networking, expo area and speakers. So you can see more information about those different sections. However, we're just going to show you on the app right now. The other part to note on the top right hand section is your message section where you get messages from event organizers and other individuals at the conferences like a DM message for example. When you join the event you join the reception area as you can see here so we've got the promotion stuff for the event itself and the information. Following that we've got the schedule area so this is like the agenda for the actual event itself. You can just scroll across to see which particular parts you want to engage with. Alternately you can click on see all and it gives you the various different options that you have for the event itself. Quite a few interesting ones coming up for our GP5T event. Underneath that area, you then have the four key parts of any hopping event, the stage, sessions, networking, and the expo area. Now, because this event is not live, we're not gonna see a great deal, so I can't really show you them in, in detail, but just like a normal hop-in event, the stage is where you have your main headline kind of speakers, like in an auditorium, for example, your keynotes or key speakers. Your sessions is where you'll have more kind of like the individual workshop areas or speaker sessions that you may want to engage with that kind of function a little bit like Zoom rooms. So if you take a look at the sessions area, you can see that when you click on there, you have the option of jumping into the various different sessions you may want to partake in. Let's have a look at the coffee room, for example, that we've got for the GP5T event. By doing so, you can see you can just simply watch the event as per a normal user. And underneath, you've got the various different tabs for you to engage with the session at that time. So just to detail these, in the bottom left hand corner, we've got the chat area for the sessions. Underneath that, we've got all the people registered for the event that you can chat to in that particular sessions part. And then on the right hand side, we've got the poll section down at the bottom. So this is if the speaker's giving you any polls for you to engage with, you can tap on those and have a chat and engage. Let's go back to the main reception area. And next we've got the networking area. So similar to a normal event, if you click on this, it gives you the option of matching up with somebody else that's enjoying the event as well and wants to network with you. If you tap on the start networking button, it'll then pair you up with somebody else for you to then have a brief chat with, depending on the time frame the organizers have set, kind of like a speed dating session. It's really fun and enjoyable. However, one difference I have noticed with the app, it's much harder to then continue or to connect with that individual afterwards by simply tapping the buttons like you can do in the browser interface. Lastly, we've got the expo area. So you can have a look here at the various different sponsors. For our GP5T event, we don't really have any sponsors, but if you were to engage with them, you can either watch their booth session, like a video that they may have. Alternately, you can then chat to the speakers in the booth as well if you wish to. One downside is I've struggled to find, again, the connect button for this particular part on the app, which does seem different to the browser interface. That may be because this is not live. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not. Lastly, underneath that particular area of the four sections, you've then got a list of all the various speakers for the event that you can have a look at if you wish to engage in their information, just like you saw in the order of the menu. Throughout the app, you do have those three sections of chat, people and polls. And these are there throughout the various different sections, as you would expect in a normal Hopin experience. So would I use the Hopin app? 
I must admit it's a nice experience, but it's definitely not as full experience as you would get if you use hop in through a browser interface like on a desktop or on a laptop. And for that reason, I must admit I prefer using those to engage with a hop in event, particularly if it's a longer event and particularly if I want to get some engagement out of it. However, if you're mobile and not able to really connect to a proper device, or if it's a really short event like a mixer kind of thing, the app is definitely appropriate and fun to use. If you'd like to know more information on how to get the full experience of using Hopin, check out this video right here. Alternately, I'm sure YouTube's recommending another video for you right here, and catch you in the next episode.